I call the meeting of the um, ad hoc ARP committee to order. We've got um, five here tonight, um, and then the entire board of selectmen. So thank you all. Nope, five was Kristen. He doesn't count? Yes, he does. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, we very much like Jennifer. She acts. She does all the work. She's an honorary. Um, but I do want to start with happy news, and that is we do have a new member of our ARPA committee family. Uh, Casey Hand gave birth uh, last night at uh, 1049 to uh, Audrey Ruth, and her mother and daughter are well. I question her priorities and the fact that she's not with us today. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll do the best we can to uh, move on. Uh, but anyway, uh, congratulations to uh, Casey and to the entire hand family for that. Um, I know people just received the minutes from July 26, so I am not going to um, ask for an approval of those at uh, today's meeting. We'll wait until we get together in the second Tuesday of September, and we'll do both uh, the mi minutes from today as well as the minutes from the 26th at that meeting. Having no uh, old business going directly to uh, new business. And so what I thought uh, after taking a quick look at the applications, the number at, at that point, it was the number of applications that we had received. I, I thought it would be helpful to just bring the committee together to talk about what we're seeing um, and um, a general sense of what looks good, what are we uh, concerned about, what do we need more information on, and then that will help us as we then for the next uh, three weeks are in a position of taking a look at um, the applications that go into the Dropbox um, before our, our meeting on September 13th. So we can, you know, we won't all be on the same page, but at least we'll know what pages everybody has. And so we can kind of take it from there. Um, so I've got a few um, general comments, but before I dominate, I'd be happy to uh, hear other people's opinions about what we have seen in the way of applications up to this point. I can go. Kristen, go ahead. Sure. You know, I, this might be one of the flaws in our application process, but the, like, for instance, the name of the company isn't on the applicant. It says, it says like the applicant contact, but is there a place where it actually says, because sometimes I was looking at, for the name of the actual um, business. So maybe, maybe some people didn't put it and that's where I got confused. Um, so just to throw that out there. And then I did notice like um, there was one business that, um, like variety video, like right. I started look. I looked at their first three, and then four and five, and I was just like, I, I don't, I don't think that those were, those were, um, COVID nineteen related. Right, right, right. No, I think that's that's one of my general comments as well. Is yeah. that I think one of the things that we had been talking about was there's kind of a, the first gateway <laughs> is impact of COVID. And so those things that haven't, you know, where there hasn't been an impact of COVID, mm -hmm. we understand it's a problem. We understand the business may be looking for funding, but that but the ARPA funds are, are not the are not the place to go for that. But can you see our uh, our screen, Kristen? Yeah, and there were there's a couple things there that I did not see, like the um that were populated at 823. Is that today? Like the uh, Rotary Club 501, the yeah, I just, Rotary I just added yeah, the Rotary Club. Oh, yeah, those, those okay. just showed up yeah, uh, today. Point. But for the rest of them, I mean, we yeah. does, doesn't that give you enough information about who the who the applicant is? <laughs> yes, no, but I'm saying when you open a variety video, 
I don't know in there, there's no where, and maybe I'm wrong, but oh, and maybe I missed it. But when you open a variety <laughs> video, it doesn't actually say, I didn't see where it said variety video. I had to go back. I mean, I thought that it said it here, but I didn't see that it said it in the application. So, okay. Um, is that right? I, I, mean, interested. I didn't see it specifically on the application. I saw the business owner's name. Yeah, that was it. Signature, but I didn't see that. And I saw the address. Yeah. Okay. But so I thought I was like, I'm like, oh. yeah, you're not crazy. The, oh, um, I was like, did I? Uh, yeah. Maybe it was like, that one brought it to my attention because there's five. I'm like, wait a minute. On the mm -hmm. applicant page, there is a second part, not at the top, where it says, um, yeah. applicant slash organization. <coughs> and I was trying to show that for one of them, but I okay, look, if I I'm pulling it up right now. Um, she may have put in her name and it's right. posted the company name. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That that that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah, right. It says applicant organization doesn't have a name there, doesn't have their social security number, their business ID number, or anything like that. So that one like threw me off. But right. regardless, that's I don't think that they're COVID related. Uh, um requests i think what happened what happened there is she filled out the information on the first one on the number one of eight and just kind of the rest of them she was just letting you you know those were other app uh, applications but under the same yeah. uh, the same grouping but we would look at them as individual they were submitted as, as individual yeah. right right because one could argue that a few of those would be um COVID related with lack of business and not able to have the cash flow to do something. Yeah, but and my argument would be some of the other requests I would go to the property owner and and because I think it would be responsibility of the property owner, not not the business itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, other general comments that people want to want to make. Um, specifically about these, or well, just can we kind talk of in process a, in, in reading in reading through these. Kind of, where, are there you know, kind of what what I would call either policy issues that jumped up, global issues that jumped up, versus the you know, we we can go back and we can look at each of the individual um, applications, and, and we I think we ought to do that before we go home tonight. But I think what what I just wanted to do is just say when you stand back and say, okay, of these. 12 or whatever that we've read what are what, what are we thinking at this point um i think there are a few that you know they could use uh some of the money like first church of christ um, they've asked for this quite a while ago for mm -hmm. reimbursement of air air fires and they still need exactly it related to. which is directly related right. um i I was interested at the uh, Maple Court issue, um, which is right next to the First Church of Christ, because I think we're having groundwater issues. And with all these houses on that street with the well water and with the new testing that people have to do for plastics in groundwater now, mm -hmm. um, I think that would be a health related issue. Um, ongoing, and I think that's definitely part of the ARPA um, final rule. Um, See, I read that thinking, like, you know, those are individual property owners that, you know, have wells that they can't maintain. I mean, there's probably other people around town, you know, that are in similar situations. So why just these five? I think they were applying under the um, rule that allows for like water main infrastructure. I think mm -hmm. that that's what, what they were trying to target. Well, right. The, of, of the four different um, areas, one yeah. one is yeah. uh, water, yeah. sewer, and broadband. And right. so they were coming in under number four yeah. in, in that regard. Yeah. So, but I think that's a different point. I think that what Kristen is saying, if I'll put words in your mouth for a second, is there are probably a number of, of households throughout Old Saybrook that would love to have moved from water to you know, um, Connecticut water and, and uh, if somebody would pay for the, the hookup. And so why, why this group versus anybody else? No, I agree. Mr. At that point, I was thinking maybe we create a slot where we put money in to start that program for our 
community at large, because I, there will be more households that will have to answer that question. How do we pay for a water main to go down the street? Right, right. Carl? Yeah, so maybe that's something similar to like what they did with all the beach communities, giving a grant or something for um, to, to replace your septic systems. So it's like, okay, anybody that wants to hook up to city water can get up to $1,500 or something like that. Right. But because um, if, we, if we just give it to this one group, it opens the can of worms for other groups, and then we could be out of all of our ARPA money. Just give, if you give two for one, you got to do for them all, and then we're out of money. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, hi, thanks. Um, so yes and no. Uh, this... The, the, it, there's very few areas in town that have a public water main going by them uh, and they're not connected to it. And uh, this group of homeowners came to me like five years ago and they've been looking to get this done. And what I said to them is, hey, you know what? If you guys could come up with some money, maybe the town comes up with some money and maybe there's some ARPA money under water infrastructure. Uh, I did not review the application. I don't know if they're asking for the entirety of the funds to come from ARPA, um, but there's probably a, a different way to fund it. Um, I don't know that it's a slippery slope because I don't know. I, I shouldn't say that. There probably are other areas of town that are in this predicament. Uh, I know these folks just... Uh, don't have room on their property for septic and well water. Uh, and there is public water, you know, right on uh, Route 154 Main Street. So um, they were, they put together, go ahead, Kristen. No, I was just going to say, Carl, um, the applicant information, there's no, it doesn't say if, if the applicant is a town or business, it just said other but it doesn't list the applicant name or the organization. So we don't even know who's requesting this. It doesn't give a contact person. It doesn't give a mailing yeah. address, or a phone number, an email. And they're just yeah, asking spoke, for $153,000. Yeah, I spoke with the uh, one of the homeowners and I said, you really need to do this as a group. And I think it'd be a much stronger application if you came in and said, as a group, we'd be willing to put in 30 grand. The town would put in 30 grand and maybe the application's for 70 grand. But uh, it, it obviously didn't come in that way. I, that's what I suggested. Uh, but yeah, so that's it. It comes in under water infrastructure, though. That's what it comes in under. And you're right. Uh, if we want to be technical about it, water infrastructure all over town, if you go down Chalker Beach, there's a lot of areas that don't have water that they would love public water because it would, trust me, it would increase the value of their homes significantly. Right. So I think for like that one, they'd have to go back to the drawing board because like they need to have like, who's the applicant? They don't break down the budget. They just say lump sum 153,000. Right, right, right. But let me, let me just ask the, uh, Carl, you question, because you probably are more in depth on the final rule than, than I am. <coughs> one aspect or one issue in my mind about this is um, in the individual, I mean, this this is uh, you know Frank Bannon has come in and said he's he's representing the the other five homeowners on on Maple <laughs> Court, but my reading of the of the final rule is that the money can't effectively can't go to the individuals that it's got to there's got to be kind of an entity and whether or not that entity is the town to then do it I mean similar to what happened over in, um, what, what was it, in Indian town that uh, you did? Evans, Evans Lane, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I guess there's, in my mind, there's that question as well. It would have to be, it would be a town project, you're correct. Uh, uh, and, you know, I, I elected, basically, you're right. I mean, we could put in a lot of water infrastructure, and I didn't think that, putting forward a $153,000 project uh, at this point for water infrastructure there was the right way to do it. I think these, it's a lot of money and they're probably gonna need to uh, gather together and if they really want it, um, contribute to it. And perhaps it can be a town project down the road. So um, I'm in the ARPA 
Q&A, it says the commitment to make investments in water, sewer, and broadband, allowing funding for improving access to clean wa drinking water, supporting vital wastewater and stormwater infrastructure, and expanding affordable access to broadband. So granting access to a broad range of water and sewer projects, including the EAP's Clean Water State Revolving Fund, the EAP's Drinking Water State Revolving Fund, and certain additional projects, including a wide set of lead remediation, stormwater infrastructure, and aid for private wells and septic units. So it does say aid, aid for private wells and septic units. Doesn't say specifically bringing um, town it's water. A, it's a lot, it is an allowable use. It's water yeah. infrastructure. I, right. I don't think there's any question about it. It's an allowable yeah. use. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it would probably be done. It's a town road that would have to be dug up. So yeah, the town is going to be a signatory on a contract with Connecticut Water. Um, but the okay. town did not propose the project. Right. And neither did right. Connecticut Water. So maybe Connecticut Water can <laughs> like, submit the application? They're, they won't do that. The Con no. Connecticut Water is not going to submit the application. No, this would have to come, come through the town. And then that becomes the negotiation about how much the town puts in, how much the homeowners put in, and then how much ARPA would, would put in to make, to make it work. Okay. Um, before we get into looking at each of these, um, any other comments that people have, general comments? I, I think it might behoove us, and I think we're all doing it anyway, is to develop a flow chart. Does it meet this criteria, this criteria, mm -hmm. and this criteria? If it's yes, let's keep going. If it's no, let's pass it out. And mm -hmm. I, I'm not quite sure exactly what all those subsequent questions should be yet, but I think if we're all <laughs> kind of following the same logic, so kind of a decision tree. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. And if you make it all the way down to the far right, you're right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and if you don't. Exactly. Okay. Because um, we're kind of talking about all of these individually, but on a highest level, we need to make sure that they meet the minimum criteria. Right. Right. I agree. I'm, one of the things that I will uh, commit to doing, because I was... I was putting it together in my head um, as I was reading reading through them is whether it's a flow chart or a matrix, but yeah. but effectively being able to um, take each one and and say, hey, does it check this box? Does it check this box? Right. And and if there's boxes that aren't checked, we can talk about it as, as a group and right. say, oh, well, I think it is, because I think right. we may have different opinions as to whether the box is checked, but that right. would be helpful. And then if you checked all the boxes, then that becomes a, an yeah. eligible And then project. maybe all that check, maybe even at that level, they need to be rated. Right, you know, right, right, right. right. Then yeah. there's a priority question. Right. But somehow we need to go back to our four pillars to make sure that right. we are, you know, exactly. keeping yeah. those in mind. Hmm? Yeah. <clears throat> this is our more names. If you scroll down to the right or no column. What you see is what we have. Okay. You see in the, the bar the slide bar on the right and slide down. I do well for eight below that. Well there's there's variety. there's six, seven, and eight from variety. Right. But that's yeah. it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Variety video volume. Right. right, just bread and eight. Okay. Um, and the only other thing I would I would add is um, similar to what we we're saying about small businesses. I would say is also the case for not-for-profits and that the, you know, we, we need to start with the question of is, was there harm um, due to the pandemic? And if there was harm due to the pandemic, then is what is being asked for mitigate that harm? I mean, those, those right. are the two tests that come right. out of treasury. And yeah. so that's, those are the tests that I was applying as, as we're going through that. Okay. So uh, Jennifer being in charge of the uh, computer there, do you wanna just, uh, should we just open up the American Legion? Because you, you wanna see the applications over it. Can I just, since we all reviewed them before, should we just like, can we just, well, she's, do we all have, like maybe have comments on each one as we're going through maybe? Right, that's that's what I was, I was just, Brad asked for it to be opened up. So I just oh. wanted to uh, make sure we were there. 
Okay, so let's start with American Legion. Um, total request was for 88,500, I think it is, 88,200. And um, we open the comments. Well, we've had this discussion before where um, we wanted to know the gross versus the net of what they lost. Right. And um, I don't know if we were able to communicate that request back to them. So Carl did reflect, did get back to them on that earlier on. And then they responded by sending their uh, financial statements for uh, 2019, 2020, and 2021. Um, that was not, as I understand it, included in the uh, application, but it is something, if if the committee doesn't have them, we can get uh, we can get them out to the committee. For some reason, I have them. And the, the net uh, associated, their, their net profit or loss, for 19 was a net profit of um, 3,169 loss in 2020 of 1,274. So effectively a 43, 4,400 uh, swing between the two. And then 21, they're back to uh, $2,210. Uh, $2, so now, what we hear, what we see in the application though, and what is not precisely clear to me when I look at the um, financial statements is that there were contributions made by a number of members to cover um, things like insurance and stuff like that. So to me, I think there's still, uh, you know, I'm, my suggestion is that the committee go back and reiterate that the, the purpose of the funds is for looking at, you know, COVID related impacts. So unfortunately, the projects that are listed are not necessarily projects which are to be funded, but we still don't fully understand the COVID related financial impact to the American Legion. I agree. Um, because it was my understanding that some members pulled out of their pockets, they right. fixed the heat in the anticipation that eventually they would be paid back. Right. But like being that it is, it didn't come back as robust as we would hope. Right. Um, so I think we need to have a dialogue with them so that they can include uh, that. Okay. And perhaps we need to express to them that if they're looking for funds I'm guessing at a roof or at a new heating system that they should apply, make that application separate. Well, would we, would this group using the ARPA funds be entertaining that application? I don't want to invite them to make an application for something that we don't think we're going to entertain. Say, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm opening the floor to go over further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I probably don't like. Um, but um, my, my theory was if, if they needed a new um, furnace, as an example, I'm thinking of what costs money, right. furnace, right. Um, they wouldn't be able to rent out their hall and they wouldn't be able to do the good deeds that they do for their veterans if they don't have that capability. So, in that sense, Perhaps it would be viable if it were if that were one of their um, applications. Right. Okay. I, I think it's a lack of dialogue with them. They're not understanding. Right. They're not understanding what we're looking for. We we know what they're looking for, but we need to try to find the, the middle ground. Kristen. Well, I was going to say, didn't businesses and nonprofits get PPP loans like for like lack of. Um, Customers, lack of members, things like that. Didn't they get that? Well, no. they they were eligible if they applied, and then there's kind of many applied but did not receive. Because that money was meant for stuff like this versus the yeah. ARPA funds. I think I don't know. I just no. sorry, Kristen. The PPP loans are just for payroll. It's for payroll. 
payroll, rent, and utilities, and they were only for an eight to 12 week period. Got it. Well, Sorry utilities, they have oil in here. You know what I mean? They have some things. That you right. right. I mean, this doesn't look COVID related at all. I would say right. no to this one. Right. Or let's go back and find out because there is some loss associated with their uh, net financials. And let's find out what that, what that is. Um, and maybe yeah. they don't realize that the rental of their hall was truly COVID related, mm -hmm. right? So that really should factor yeah. into their losses. That, that's what I'm thinking. Like yeah. I, I'm, I'm thinking they're not understanding that. Right. Just as a nonprofit in the business, if they were able to be open, right, they lost that opportunity. Right. Okay. Other comments? Um, let's move on to then. The next, which I have as being the fire, volunteer fire department. That's a lot of money for, uh, for radios, for portable radios. And Matt Kravitz has a, has a battery company. I'm, I wonder if he can help him with the replacement batteries. Well, Carl, Bruce, have, jump. No, yeah. no, Bruce, you take the... <laughs> So, so yes, uh, ah, radios, um, there is some, so the batteries are, uh, older, that's true, uh, but there is some investigation into a uh, new town-wide system. Uh, both communications, both in radios. And uh, I know the chief of police was looking into this with Motorola. Um, and I'd have to check back with the chief to see if he's made any headway with Motorola. Um, so there was some discussion, Kristen, this came to the Board of Finance. There was some discussion from a Board of Finance member saying, yeah, you can replace these batteries. Uh, the fire department says they <laughs> took that suggestion, replaced some of the batteries, and they failed immediately. And that some of the firefighters are very uncomfortable with the replacement batteries. Uh, then I heard from a member of the Board of Finance, well, they didn't replace them with the better bat. They went with lower quality batteries. Um, so there's a little bit of a... I feel like a little ping ponging going on here. Um, and uh, I think what I'm going to do, I was thinking about this recently, is just put everybody in a room. Just put everybody in a room. You know, board of finance member, chief of ambulance, fire, police, um, you know, and say, and, and by the way, the state, because the state has a radio system uh, that we may eventually go on. Uh, and put everybody in a room and just say, what is the, you know, hash it out. That's what has to happen. Do we need to spend $500,000 on radios for the fire department or is there a better way forward? Um, and we haven't done that yet. Okay, so, so we'll, we'll put this on hold until that, that kind of session happens and then we'll kind of re review it at that point. We're gonna need that session to happen sooner or later, correct? Timing well, again, the timing is we don't need to, I mean, they, we have a, our first, I'll, I'll say it this way, our first deadline is September 1. I fully believe, based on what we've seen coming in, that there will be funding available after the September 1 deadline. And so in, I, I, my sense of it is we don't have to commit until 24 and spend until 20, end of 26. So there is time to get this right. And so it sounds to me that that's, that's the step that Carl needs to take is let's get it right and then let's figure out where the fun financing is gonna be. The other, one, other thing, they should have checked out for the provision of government services versus capital improvements in water, sewer, and broadband. Hmm. Okay. Uh, all right, first, church air purifiers. 
I think it's directly related to the impact of COVID. Right. And and they they did it in their application, so there isn't yeah. any any additional need for any other information. Yeah. No, they're using those going forward, right? Right. Because we're still in need. Mm -hmm. Any okay? Any we don't need to spend time if we don't need to spend time. How, how do we bring this forward then? Do we vote and say Can well we what we said this to the board so what we said was we wanted to see everything come in, you know, with that September one date. That's why we said it. Get everything in, then we'll put a package in front of the board of select. Okay. So I would say this is you know clearly part of that package. Can I just uh, ask a question? Is it yeah. if the the money can be used to reimburse something from a year ago? Yeah. Yes, because okay. it's different. Yeah, right. yeah. Yes. Yep, just making sure. Okay. Uh, Main Street crosswalks. It can. Yep. <laughs> okay, done. <laughs> Are there? I mean, I'm, no, me, no. Yeah, my no question. Uh, I'll start off simply by saying I think it's a great idea. I think of, of what. You know what you propose, Carl, relative to the uh, needs of the town around infrastructure. This made a lot of sense for use of these funds to be able to do that, and um, it's certainly going to enhance the downtown for all the businesses associated, which is one of the one of the purposes here. So, um, as far as I'm concerned, I think this this is a, a one that we ought to put in the package as well. I agree. It affects both community and economics. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. And I think any time that you can see someone before they actually step on the yeah. crosswalk, it's. Yeah. yeah. And the more people we can get walking on Main Street, the Exactly. And, and we've got to get across now. Yeah. Kristen, did you, did you have a point? No, I was just wondering, curious what the, what the level of current incidence is. Because they just said that there was a, there was a number of incidents where there's been issues. I didn't know yep. the number. Yep. Uh, you know, nothing. Nothing's happened particularly recently, but uh, there were several people up at the Liberty Bank crosswalk yeah. in particular uh, several years ago. There were at least two or three incidents up there where people were hit uh, in the crosswalk. Uh, look, I walk it. Uh, and we all, I'm sure, we're all on Main Street quite a yeah. bit. Um, I walk it frequently, and cars. You know, I, I hope this would help cars stop. It's a traffic calming tool also, uh, but it's certainly for visibility. Um, there were incidents in the past. There, I don't think there has been recently. Uh, just so you know, I've gotten calls from parents who are just like, you know, mm -hmm. and I know there's a cop there usually to help them cross, but the kids are forgetting uh, all over the place. And... The kids are a concern for a lot of parents. I've gotten calls from friends of mine um, whose kids, like my kid almost got hit the other day and uh, cars don't stop, we need better visibility. Uh, and certainly the flashing uh, rectangular beacons will help that. Um, I, I can't, I think I put it in here. We are looking at a fifth crosswalk. Did I put that in there? Yeah, it's in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we are looking at that. Uh, we're going to propose it to the state. I don't know what they're going to say. Uh, and we would move the Sheffield Street, Sheffield Street crosswalk northerly uh, towards the Cartier Optical in that uh, area. And then the next, that Kate crosswalk would go uh, in front of the Kate and cross there. So we're bringing back the crosswalk that we took out years right, ago. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. But no, I agree with you, Carl. I mean, that exact instance, instance uh, actual accidents occurring that would cause bodily harm has been less. But the close calls, mm -hmm. I would say, happened yeah. Yeah. And just recently yeah. at the sidewalk sale. Yeah. Just where the where the Lions Club tent was, we observed at least three occasions on Friday. Um, and we just stopped looking on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just a case of too much traffic, not being able to see the people step out. And yeah. so I think this is a great idea. Cool. And this um, may be totally unrelated, Carl, but do you know if that will impact parking spots? Yes, it will. Um, certainly it will uh, if we 
through the crosswalk at the Kate and then move another one over towards uh, the other side, towards Cartier. It has to. I don't see how yeah. it doesn't. Right. I mean, that's what they do. The sides of them, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. They do. Okay. And, you know, we have the medians. Even people are like, people don't see the people that are standing on that platform right now, you know, in the middle of the, when they're going across. Yeah. I see so many times people like just go by it. I know at Harper, they used to call it the aisle of safety. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's why we need to have lights on that median too. Okay. Right. Carl, great job. Um, Maple Court. We've talked about it a little bit. Do, does anybody have anything else that they want to mention about it? I think we're going back to the town can submit an application for infrastructure. That's right. what I would I would yeah. suggest, mm -hmm. and perhaps open up the door to have some kind of a, a program so that other members of the community could, could request and awareness. It. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Riverside Cemetery. This was 228,600 to so, redo all of their roadways within the cemetery. If, See, can I town, make a comment? Uh, sure, it's a town property. Is that, it's, but it's it's maintained by the, by the association. Is that what's going on? It, it's run by, so the Riverside Cemetery is on town property. That's oh, the um, nature of it. Run by an association, um, a private association. Quite frankly, uh, we get asked for money from Riverside and from Cypress. They both need uh, lots of paving, uh, and they both they both ask me for money every year. And my response is, "Are you willing to open your books and show me your revenues and uh, what you have?" And I have never seen them. Um, that's number one. Number two, uh, I, when I first heard this project, my question is, how is it related to COVID? Right. How, how, how did COVID affect the Riverside Cemetery? <laughs> now, and I'm not being facetious when I say that. Oh, I thought the no, same we were, we were thinking of the end product. <laughs> Again, I'm sorry. Um, it's not funny. But um, I, I, I wonder if paving is necessary. I mean, it is not a highly traveled road um, with cars, and it is mostly used by walkers <laughs> who like to go and visit for a few minutes or maybe a half an hour and come back. I'm wondering maybe if the cost of paving is, is more than what's necessary with our conservation commission. I mean, we're really looking for permeable surfaces, not non-permeable surfaces. So I have questions. Hmm. All the way around. I would say the roads, COVID the, related, and we should just um, move to the next one. <laughs> the roads, yeah, and, and just to comment, the roads in both Cy Cy Cyprus and uh, Riverside are not good. <laughs> they're they're just in awful disrepair. But I'm I'm not so sure this is an ARPA application. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Correct. All right, we'll move on. Do we have to make a motion? Do we have to make like a motion to um, not accept this one? Um, nope. No, nope. I think not, to, not today. Today is really just kind of, I think, okay. by going through this, we'll all have a better sense of where we, what, okay. what we're looking for, and then we can do that when we, when mm -hmm. we come back to it. Okay. Uh, senior Pavilion, $80,000. This is the one we have um, had in <laughs> from um, um, social services, and we've heard about it a few times in the public comment. So, people's reaction? Uh, knowing that um, there's limited space within the senior housing there for a community room, they have a small one. Um, this would open up the avenue for mental health by being able to share with families outside, um, give them more possibilities of what to do right there in that facility certainly speaks to the isolation that was caused by COVID. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I think we should move forward with this and just... Okay. There, are there any any other opinions about it? Are there Brad, Kristen? I, think it's Brad. I was on the fence with this one because there's like, you know, we had positive 
people, people speaking positively for it, people were against it. Um, it seems like it's a little bit controversial. Um, yeah. You know, is it really COVID related? You know, I mean, people go outside during COVID, you know, um, many people do. Not when you're 80 and 90. I think you need a place to go. Yeah. I How think many people can fit under 28 by 16? Um, well, right now, Park and Rec puts 30 or 40 children <laughs> under our. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think, program, I think so. the issue was more a matter of where people were able to visit with their families and that kind of stuff. So I don't think it, this is designed to hold the entire population, but just be an outdoor meeting space with some cover associated with it that would, as Judy mentioned, would be able to assist in the isolation that um, mm -hmm. we found out. I mean, part of the issue is you find out a problem from COVID and you come up with a solution to mitigate that problem. And to me, that's the way, that's the way this is COVID related. Um, relative to the you know, um, different opinions, I think we need to, as a committee or somebody can suggest the town, I, I don't know who, but we ought to get something official from that group endorsing it, you know, saying this is what we want so that it's not, you know, we, it's not up to us to choose between this person or that person, but if the group is asking for it, then that's really what our responsibility is. Doesn't the application include a letter from their board of directors? Yeah. Okay, if it did, then I, I didn't read far enough to get to that point. Well, it says the applicant is, oh wait. Oh yeah, it says the applicant is Sue Consoli versus, um, versus, Okay. All right. All right. Okay. I, I didn't go far enough. Okay. Then that, then that really, from my perspective. Yeah, that's what meets, I thought too. Meets okay. the needs. Okay. Okay. Uh, then the other social services one, that's the one that's been kind of back and forth around food, not food, summer program. And, um, what I would like to do suggest is we invite um, Heather and Sue in for the, maybe the meeting on the 13th and just, and rather than go back and forth, um, Brad had mentioned this to me and I think it's a good idea, rather than going back and forth, just having a, a discussion with them about um, what it is they're trying to do, if they want to amend the, the application they have. I would argue that some of the things that they're asking for are not necessarily directly COVID related, um, but I think we ought to have that conversation and then um, take it from there. I think also uh, we might uh, include Shoreline Kitchen just because, I mean, I, I'm seeing about four different venues for providing food mm -hmm. and can they maybe work together and make it work? Well, well, I think some of the problem is it's not so much that there are four different, but their timing of when you pick up the food because yeah. no one stops for a month at a time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people, you know, your refrigerator only holds so much food, so they have to go back again. And yeah, but when you have four different organizations doing the same thing, I would think that it could be consolidated down where you can be open more frequently or available more frequently, but I think four people are trying to accomplish the same thing. I, mean, I think it needs to be looked at. Right, but I think that you know that was one aspect of it. The rest of it was there was the uh, you know the funding for home repairs yeah. to provide the internet essential classes, a contractor to help um, manage the caseload, their emergency housing, which I don't know whether they need anymore because of what happened with the feds. Um, well, the other thing is Chapman has a program for rent. They have a program for paying mortgages. CHFA. Um, CHFA. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm not quite sure. And then and the other thing is, I believe there was a moratorium right. on rent, and there was a moratorium on mortgages. And then there is an emergency uh, fund available at all times through Chapman. Okay. So, anyway, I think that's that's the best way for us to handle that one. Uh, and then the last one that we all had a chance to review because the um, Rotary didn't come in until about four o'clock this afternoon, is a variety video. And 
there is a variety, I guess I shouldn't say that that way, variety of things that they are asking for relative to business need. Um, only one of which I would be able to go and directly relate to COVID, which would, but I'm really not even sure about that SBA loan that they were talking about because it, I'm not sure they took the SBA loan out because of COVID, but they're having trouble repaying it because of COVID is what, what I'm reading in the application. I'm making the assumption that they're referring to the economic injury disaster loan that the SBA had, EIDL. which people took out oftentimes not realizing it was a loan and they mm -hmm. thought that it was grant relief. We saw plenty of businesses do that through Small Business Development Center um, because they didn't talk to anybody. They just kind of reacted. But I mean, I'm inferring that right. based on work experience rather than the application. Right, right, right. Yeah, they just refer to it as, as the SBA loan. And did they have an uh, opportunity to get the uh, uh, PPP money? Well, they would they would have been an eligible business for that, but they in their application they say they did not apply for any of those. Yeah, but would that be an argument? I mean, even if they had applied and they were granted, if they are still in need now because it wasn't enough, I don't know. I mean, there are some questions here that we don't have the answers to. But to me, an SBA loan, if they have been harmed because their customers were, were gone and now their customers are very slow in returning because of COVID. Um, one would say, well, it is possible that that is COVID related. Um, not having enough cash flow to get a, a decent computer to be able to do the new paperwork that state and federal are requiring. That could be COVID related. I'm just putting myself into a really small business mindset here, mm -hmm. saying there are some things here. There are others that I say, well, I'm sorry, but that's your business decision. Put up a new sign or don't put up a new sign. You have to figure that one out. Right. Um, alarm system, you have to figure that one out. That's part of your business and it should be part of your business plan. But the fact that they don't have any cash flow because customers aren't coming in directly related to COVID and now we're still in a recovery period and we haven't recovered, one could argue that that might be appropriate. Okay, so your your suggestion is out of some of these applications, there, there may be a COVID relationship, but not out of all of them. Yes, I that is definitely that. how I would stand. Yeah. There are some here that I don't think uh, I just think they should be going to their, their property owner. Right. Whoever yeah. they're receiving from. The garden I the agree. Property. I read these thinking these aren't COVID related, you know? I mean, to have a nice sidewalk, well, the town loves sidewalks, and I would love to have a sidewalk there, but just in front of that business, it wouldn't make sense. If you're broken up, you don't go further up and down. Didn't we just put a sidewalk in front of there? Mm -hmm. Is it in front of that, or did it stop just before that? Because it's just before Pond Road, isn't it? Uh, there's a side, no, there's a new sidewalk in front of a variety of oh, okay. referring to Because we have a new sidewalk, that's beautiful. Oh, right okay, I misunderstood. Yeah, that. I think that's where the paving came from, and the yeah. signage, but, and the flowers. Yeah. But to me, I, I think that's a landowner issue and not, not yeah. a COVID art right. issue. Right, right, right. Uh, Okay, so those are the applications that are in. Um, what we are, we knew, we know from, we, we know we got another one in um, just recently now. And then we also have, um, we've got a letter supporting an application we don't have <laughs> from the Hope Par Partnership. We have got, letters supporting them. Um, so we know we've got some others that, that are coming in. We've got one week left, we? one week and one day. Yeah. So Thursday. So um, I guess the best thing to do is, has ever, did everybody ultimately have access to the Dropbox? Mm -hmm. So that worked out. Kristen, you had the Dropbox? Yeah, I have a question though. Did we go over the Lions Club one? Uh, we not only went over it, we have funded it, and um, I believe it's going to town meeting. 
Oh, that one. Okay, because it was in here and it was in my notes. Okay, but we did that. Yeah, well, this is just this is just the complete package. Yep. It's same. It's done. The same as the same. Estuary. Same with the estuary. Okay. Great. Okay. So that's all. I have um, to be so somewhere in ten minutes, so I have to drop. So sorry. Okay. Well, let me just. I just wanted to make sure that everybody is okay with the uh, use of the drop box and being able to review. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's not worked that well. Yeah. All right. And I will try to set up that matrix and get the matrix out. Yeah. So when you do the review for the ones that come in over the next week, we can all kind of be working off the same matrix. Yeah. And then uh, we'll get together on the 13th and have a fun time. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, Variety, like, do they order another DBA name or, or uh, LLC or anything like that, you know? When I looked up the from the assessor's office, it said Madison P and G Properties LLC from Madison. <laughs> so I'm I'm assuming someone owns that property, but may may not be. Oh, you think they rent it? Is that is that who knows? I, I it's none of that showed up in the application. Yeah, yeah. None of that, so I don't yeah. know. Kristen, thank you. And any comment? Not yet. Any <laughs> comment from the other uh, comments from the ARPA committee members? So I, I'm not a committee member, sorry, but <laughs> um, yes, just, are, there are yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> just, sure. to, just because a lot of people call me, um, you don't want any clarification to go out to people at this time. This is just an internal discussion, but at some point. Are we going to want to have a mechanism for conveying certain things to people about, you know? I think it would be, you know, what you heard tonight, at least what I'm hoping you hear and anybody who watches the video hears, is that the funding is designed to be able to um, assist um, problems directly related to COVID or related to COVID. And that what people are look, should be looking for is based on those problems, how are those problems getting mitigated with that funding? And so if they can tie the request into the pandemic and how you know, this is, is helping based on the problems associated with the pandemic, I, that's the clarity that I would feel very comfortable you you providing. Yeah. Okay. Um, but some people, it looks like there's specific things you're going to want from them, but we'll hold off on that for now. Um, you and I can get back together uh -huh. and look at these notes and see who's who's going to send a note to, on on the ones that we review tonight. Who's going to send notes to those ones? Okay. Okay. The other thing about variety points. Um, I mean, I just kind of like it's a shame that they didn't apply for PPP. Like, it, and I'm not quite sure where um, the liability is. I mean, it's like the opportunity was there. I mean, you know, two lenders told me that they approved 95% of the applications. But is that enough for you? Let's hear from I had the same thought, Brad, and I went and I just double checked SBA parameters. I'm looking at them now. So, based on what variety of videos businesses, yeah. they are potentially excluded because they're a sexually purient um, where they derive the majority of their revenues from. So, stores like that would be excluded from being able to apply for any of the SBA products. Is so, it be excluded? Yeah. So would it be excluded from this fund? This, this I don't believe that that's outlined in ARPA, but in terms of the SBA, like the SBA wouldn't do a strip club or a, a video store like Variety Video. So, right. but so that they couldn't do PPP or EIDL based yeah. on that. Mm -hmm. So that would be that was my question. Like, how did they get that based on what their mo their business model is? But ARPA, I don't think, has those same restrictions. Yeah, I have probably verified before we're right. doing that. Right. Oh, absolutely. That's why we're having these conversations, just so we know. Okay. Any other points? Then I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? A second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Um, Thank you. I'll make a motion to adjourn the board of selectmen meeting. Yep, second. All those in favor? 
All right. Thank you all.